guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I am super excited to be back. I feel like I have not posted in a while, but here we are again. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. So in today's video, I am actually going to be transforming an old ottoman into a really cute coffee table, and then I'm also gonna be doing some DIY um, decor. I do wanna welcome you guys if you are new here. If you are, thanks so much for joining me. I would love for you guys to stick around by subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell so you're notified every time I upload a video. For the first DIY, I'm gonna show you guys how I transformed this really ugly and outdated leather or pleather ottoman into a super cute farmhouse style coffee table. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys, I had a completely different idea going on in my head of what I wanted to make, but as it goes in my life, nothing ever goes as planned, so I had to go to like plan B, C, D, E. Uh, <laughs> so structurally, this coffee table came out just fine, but there are some things looking back on it now that I wish I could have done differently or I would have um, pulled myself away from it to completed it the way that I wanted it to, but I still feel like it's super, super cute. My original idea was to make it into um, an, like a coffee table ottoman, like to have it open and close as well, but that just did not work out. But either way, I'm gonna show you guys how I made that using my old ottoman. So here I'm just taking it apart and you guys can see the hydraulic thing that I'm taking off. On the other side, it was actually broken. So when we opened this, it didn't actually stay up. We had to hold it up in order to get anything. And because I had made a cover for it, it was very rare that we ever got into it anyways. So it wasn't really serving its purpose too much. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the hardware and just start, uh, start taking it apart. And to be honest with you, I was expecting something completely different not completely different I was expecting something a little bit different on the inside and for the time that it took me to take it apart I could have just built the frame myself and honestly if you guys want to recreate this all you have to do is just kind of follow um, the the frame that you guys are gonna see and create your own it's really probably not that hard again it did take me a little bit longer to take it off than it was if I would have just actually started from scratch Okay, so it's almost completely taken apart. As you guys can see, once I start getting onto the frame, it's a little bit unfinished. The wood is a little raggedy, um, splintery. And so I just flipped it over to take off all of the staples that are left over from where it was holding the pleather at the bottom. And I don't want any of those to be on there because, um, you know, if we do touch it from like the bottom, I don't want us to get cut or nicked or anything like that. And then you guys will see those little support corners. <laughs> I had such a hard time taking off the bigger ones on the corner. I feel like maybe I should have left them all on. Um, but again, I didn't realize certain things until after <laughs> it was done but it's okay so we just went ahead and left them and here's what I meant where you guys could probably just create your own frame because all I did really was just build around the original frame so I basically took my whole ottoman apart just to have the frame um, left over and again it wasn't something that I was planning I, my plan was to make it similar to the leather one um, but wood does that make sense Anyway, so I just took these two or these one by two pieces of board to create the frame and I did use liquid nails. I didn't have any wood glue and I feel like the wood glue is a lot more expensive, which this worked just fine. So I'm just kind of measuring out, you know, where I'm going to cut the pieces and where I'm going to put them on there. So I did attach them with the liquid nails and then I added some 
regular nails to keep them in place and as close as possible to the original frame and there are some gaps that are left over that I will be filling in later and then eventually I do add some screws to the bottom and top pieces to just hold all of the frame together. I don't know why I'm talking so slow right now. <laughs> all right, so here's the part where I just, you know, put my holes in there and then put in my screws. So once that piece of fabric is completely out of there, I did start filling up the gaps. And instead of using wood filler, I did use painter's caulk. And you, it, I couldn't really tell. It's There's not much of a difference with the exception of the price. So I did price out what the wood filler costs in comparison to this. And it's a lot cheaper to go this way. And again, you can't really tell once you fill it all in and then sand it down. I also purchased some legs and then also the little brackets that go underneath and silly me I didn't realize that I actually got the ones that go on an angle so the legs when they're put on there they're not completely straight up and down they go out a little bit which I didn't want to go to the store and go and buy some new ones like I it took me several days to finish this whole project you'll see my change in outfits my change in nails and so then when I flipped it over to put the legs on there I realized that the particle board or the board that's at the bottom is not going to be thick enough to hold the screws so the screws were going to pop out on the other side so I improvised and I made it like the support right in between and I just took some of my wood that I used for like the top of it um, I just cut some pieces like that are perfectly square and just glued them to the bottom and then through the other side I did screw them in and just flipped it over and put my legs back on or not put my legs but put the bar hardware on and then my legs So this is the part where I started getting really mad. I was trying to glue all of my pieces together um, just to have a complete one piece top to go at the top and every time I clamped them together they would come apart and I I struggled with this for like an hour. I am really not sure why. I didn't even show you like all the <laughs> the frustrations because I was cussing at myself a lot so I just kind of edited that out and you guys will see that eventually I just start putting everything together one piece by one piece um, before I do that though I did take that Walmart paint it's just a flat white it's ready to paint um, you guys can use any type of paint that you would like but again this is just like a flat white paint um, again from Walmart and just started painting the inside and out of the frame had these toe kick boards left over from our kitchen remodel that I'm going to use. Luckily, I had enough to cut the pieces that will go all along the bottom of the new coffee table. Unfortunately, there's there were not long enough to cover the whole entire piece. Um, there is going to be like a quarter inch gap all around and you guys will see. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it down with my liquid nails. Just press it down really well to make sure that it's sort of even and you guys will see. He, um, as I'm adjusting them you see the gap all around and I didn't have any extra pieces of anything to cover that so this is the part where it's like who's gonna know who's gonna know 
I just filled it. I just filled it with some painter's cock. And I had to go into it like twice just because it was kind of deep in there. But, you know, once I look at it, because I'm looking at it right now as I'm finishing and doing this voiceover. And you can't really tell unless I point it out. Any hoozy. So once I get to my top again, you guys will see. I'm putting each individual piece down. I'm putting some liquid nail and then I'm going to go ahead and nail it down. So my original plan was to have a complete top piece, um, which didn't work out. And then I was going to do some hinges on it um, and then, you know, to make it go up and down. And the original lid for the, or the original top for the ottoman, I was going to use that piece at the, at the top and like, nail it down and create another little frame on top of it and then the top was going to have a hinge so there was a little bit of like storage does that make sense i don't even know if i'm making sense or not but anyway because i couldn't glue all these pieces together in one piece i had to kind of scratch that whole idea out um and once you're into like a project and you're into it for several days it's sort of hard to like pull yourself out of it because at that point I just wanted it to get finished you know and so I, <laughs> um yeah this was my other plan to just do the regular top so I hope I didn't confuse you guys as to what I wanted to do but you guys saw I just you know filled in the cracks sanded it down and then went in there one more time um to kind of make it as even as possible but Nothing is ever perfect, and you know what? It's okay. It's not perfect, but it's mine, and I made it, and I'm super proud of it still. The easiest thing for me to do was to just vacuum off all that dust so that when I go in there with a the stain, it's going to be nice and smooth. There's not going to be any residue or anything left over, and I am using this Minwax wood finish, and it's just like a, a black color, and... I, go, I started going into it with a paper towel. I don't know why, but then I eventually started using a rag that was a little bit damp just so that it wasn't so thick and you could see some of the wood grain. What I wish I would have done since I couldn't do the, the opening closing lid on this was to put a support beam that goes across the bottom. I think I could probably still do that once it's now that it's complete, but I wish I would have done that just so that in the center there's some support and like if anybody thinks about sitting on this right in the center <laughs> they don't fall right through so I might actually still do that support um, at the bottom so now I'm going into it with this polycrylic finish and it starts sort of milky but it does dry clear and it's flat there's not going to be any shimmer any shine to it and that's exactly what I want and I did end up doing three coats of this I wanted to make a tray, but I didn't want to make the typical one because I feel like I have so many different style of trays on my channel. Right now, like the look that's trending is like boho, but I still have like those little farmhouse elements in my house. So I kind of wanted to mix those two looks together. So I actually did repurpose one of these um, slabs of like a trunk. My sister gave me these several years ago and I wasn't sure what to make with them. Um, one side of it is sort of finished, but it's still raw. It still has like the, um, the sap on it. And so I had to kind of work with that. But I was actually really happy I had these so I could create the tray that you guys will see. Start 
starting out, you guys can see that there's the finished part and then the other side that's more natural. It doesn't have anything on it and that's how I wanted to keep it. And you guys can see around there's some pieces of bark left over, but it wasn't all around. So I had to remove the excess pieces with my multi-tool and I eventually did start using my hammer to just kind of hack it off. And then I didn't show it, but I did go into it with my sander just to make it nice and smooth on the edges. So I don't like wasting stuff and I am reusing the legs that I took off my original ottoman that you guys saw and I'm just going to sand them down a little bit that way when I use the paint it's going to stick to it a little bit better and the paint that I'm going to be using it's some oops paint that I got at this is bear paint so is this home Depot? at this I think this is home, yep, home Depot right there. I don't know what color it is. You guys will see all the numbers on there. I don't see where the actual name is on there. And this was like a dollar or something like that. So if you guys ever want to buy paints that are a little bit more higher quality, definitely check out like the oops paints or the sample paints at either Lowe's or Home Depot. I went into it with a brush, just like brushing it along, but I love the textured look. So then I went into it with like a Dollar Tree brush and I just started tapping on the second layer. this really cute lantern at a TJ Maxx and I think it was like a dollar fifty or something like that it was like a fall clearance and it had a glass vase but I dropped something in it I dropped a candle I didn't place it in there softly I like dropped it in there and it shattered on me so I'm like ugh. so anyway this is the inspiration that I took for the candle holder that you guys are gonna see next so starting out on this one, I did use a regular vase that I just had laying around. You guys will see it's not one of the sizes that you would find at Dollar Tree, but it's the same circumference. Um, you guys can find some similar at Dollar Tree that are a little bit taller. I wish actually I would have used the taller one. So I did use that wooden round from Dollar Tree and then I do have this reed linked down below. I bought it through Amazon. I've used it in a lot of um, projects. So I just glued the wooden piece at the bottom and then I just started cutting the pieces of the reed to go around on my lantern. So for the side pieces, I did glue them down just at the bottom and at the top. I didn't want to put any glue through the center because you'll be able to see it through the glass. Um, and you guys saw that I just kind of stuck it up into the reed that's on the rim. And so I did take some beads. These were actually beads from a Dollar Tree frame that I just kind of reused. But I do have beads linked down below also that are right around that size. And I'm taking another piece of the reed and then I'm making a couple of holes that's where the handles are gonna go. And I didn't just wanna glue down the, the twine with the beads. I wanted to thread it through and then tie it because I knew that my daughter was actually gonna lift it up. So I didn't want her to lift it up and then have it fall apart. So this, is, this works out perfectly if you do wanna use, or if you do wanna make a handle that you're actually gonna be able to pull. Cause sometimes if you just glue stuff down, it's gonna pop off if you don't do it right. Um, you guys can see that I, Go ahead and glue that piece right around the top um, above the other piece of reed. Okay. 
for this next one, I just reused or recycled a tin can. Um, it's just like on the smaller size. And I did take two of these uh, styles of rope from Dollar Tree, just like the regular twine rope and then the nautical rope, like the the that one that I'm <laughs> twisting. That one comes out in three pieces. So I just took that apart. And I don't like that Dollar Tree is not bringing the thicker... Um, brown twine rope it's like just thinner and I don't know I don't I don't really like this one because I feel like it's just too thin either way I just took both of those together started twisting them and as I twist I go ahead and glue it right around the tin next DIY. I had several different ideas on how I wanted to make it, but I really think that the outcome um, is really nice and I really like it and it ties everything together. So let's get on to this DIY. Okay, so for this one, I am reusing the top from the ottoman and just taking it all apart. Um, again, I was going to use this for the new coffee table, but I scratched off that idea. And so <laughs> um, this was a pain in the butt to take off. I honestly felt like once I took off those support beams that you see across that I was going to break the whole thing. Um, part of it was actually already broken. So, you know, it was just a matter of putting some elbow grease into removing it all and then taking off all the staples and nails that were left over. And you guys will see that there's still some of that foam left over also from like the cushion. So I just tried to scrape that off and then sanded it down. So once it's sanded down, I am going to be using that same paint I used on my um, wooden tray. <laughs> um, again, I don't know the name of it, but it's like a cream color. It's not completely white. Um, and I didn't cover the whole piece. Like I just went at it with like one layer because I did want some of that natural wood to pop through also and then I just took a piece of wood that was sort of like my stencil or my ruler to make a border around it so I was gonna build a frame around it but I didn't have enough of the wood pieces to do that so this is the next best option if you want to save some money and you don't have enough wood you can create your own frame just by painting a border around it and I did use some chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree this does go a long way so you don't have to use that much and you can tape it off if you want to get really straight lines or you can just try to be steady with it and then just do that I didn't have painters paint or painters uh, tape so I just went ahead and freehanded it Next. 
next to it, I'm going to make another frame or another border with this Craft Smart paint in khaki. And I feel like these colors are like a good color mix for like that boho-ish look. But because it is a boho slash farmhouse mix, I am going to sand it down to distress it a little bit. You guys can see there in the corners, I'm just putting a little tiny bit of paint like going across just to make it look like it's an actual frame and not just a painted border. And again, just taking my sandpaper and sanding it down a little bit to distress it. So here I'm just tracing out a design for a vase and you guys can freehand it or you can use a stencil just like I did. I just use a plate and a vase <laughs> to kind of do that. And then I am using some brad nails because I don't have regular nails um, that I could use for this. I just kind of took them apart and started nailing them down. I did like every quarter inch or so. So to make my vase, like my 3D-ish rope vase, I did use this rope from Dollar Tree. Rope from Dollar Tree. When you take it apart, there are three strands. Uh, I did end up kind of tying those pieces together to make it long, long enough to go around this. So you guys can see I'm just kind of twisting or twisting it around the nail so it doesn't come off. And right here, I'm just kind of messing with it, trying to figure out what kind of design I want on it. I redid it like two or three times. Um, so you guys just kind of play around with it and see what you like. Once you have your inner design, make sure you go around the edges with the rope to kind of finish off the look. And then you can put whatever type of greenery that you want. And I actually had these three long stems that I purchased at Dollar Tree. I'm not sure if they still have them or not, but I thought this was actually the perfect touch and it definitely gave it that boho-ish farmhouse look. Alright you guys, so that is it for today's video. Let me know in the comments down below which one is your favorite and how you would have changed up the coffee table if you could. Um, you know, at this point I already made it, I can't change it, but if you were to recreate something like that, how would you recreate it? So yeah, that is going to be it for today. Again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you guys leave me a thumbs up, leave me your comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe. Alright guys, see you on the next one. Bye!